Michael Boyles, strengthcoach.com presents the Strength Coach Podcast, brought to you by Perform Better, the experts in functional training and rehabilitation, performbetter.com. All right, hey everybody, welcome to episode 374 of the Strength Coach Podcast, brought to you by Perform Better, the experts in functional training and rehabilitation. I'm your host, Anthony Rand. The show notes are located at strengthcoachpodcast.com. All right, on the strengthcoach.com and mbsc.tv coaches corner, I spoke with Coach Boyle about the strengthcoach.com forum and kind of how uh, it's evolved over the years. His upcoming lecture at the Sport Performance Clinic at Endicott College on March 9th. We'll have a link for that in the show notes. His disdain for isolation exercises, or is it really just isolation exercise machines? And uh, an exercise, a dumbbell drop, broad jumps, and box jumps. Going to get his thoughts on those. For the AG1 Hit the Gym with a Strength Coach segment, I have on Allie Gilbert, the queen of men's health, founder of Silverback Summit and the Silverback Coaching by Allie G. I wanted to get Allie to talk, uh, you know, just about TRT again. We've had her on before, but, you know, this stuff is confusing and it evolves. And uh, I wanted to get her on to talk about her process that she goes through with her clients as a coach. Uh, some of the things that she'll ask, some of the lab markers that she'll look at. Maybe what we can do to avoid uh, TRT, to just to basically keep T levels up high. Uh, what she calls GPP for TRT, uh, and basically what has to happen before even thinking about starting it. Uh, and that would basically be kind of getting some, getting the weight down, like some really good lifestyle changes. So it's not just like you go and then all of a sudden your, your, TR, your testosterone levels are low. They're going to look at other markers, and then she's going to look at other lifestyle things. So we're going to uh, talk about the idea that it's the new steroids and some myths and misconceptions, a little bit about her upcoming webinar, that and so much more coming up in a little while. AG1, 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. Guys, visit athleticgreens.com slash Sancroach to get your free your supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs today for the Nomly maximizing the member experience. Assume he's the founder of Nomly. He's going to talk all about building trust and providing value for members and staff by having guest speakers. Good stuff from Sumi coming up in a little bit. Guys, if you don't know about it, you should perform better rewards program. You can get rewarded for purchases, social activity, referrals, and more. It's easy and free. And all you do, you have to be an active performbetter.com account holder in order to sign up. So you can go to performbetter.com to do that. You can view and redeem all of your rewards. Basically, for every dollar you spend on qualifying purchases, you earn a point, 1.25 points, or 1.5 points based on your rewards tier level. And then when you reach uh, 100 points, you can redeem a $5 coupon and so on. So the more points you have, you get additional rewards you can check it all out at performbetter.com lots of things to get to so let's get on the phone with coach boyle all right guys now it's time for the shrinkcoach.com and nbsc.tv coaches corner with coach boyle you can try shrinkcoach.com out seven days for free guys the forum is still it's i mean it's funny because Coach Boyle's book, Designing Strength Training Programs and Facilities, came out uh, the second edition last year, and we uh, we talked all about that. But one of the funny things for me that I was thinking about was on the original copy of that the the first edition on the bottom it said Michael Bo- Michael Boyle dot biz, and that was Coach Boyle's original before strengthcoach dot com. It was the forum, and I was thinking, man. It's still going. It's still some really great conversations on the forum. So if you haven't checked it out, really, it's seven days for free. You should head over there just to kind of see uh, the action on the forum. You can always get a little deeper insight than you will on, let's say, Twitter or Instagram from Coach Boyle. So make sure you check that out at shrankcoach.com. Coach, how you doing? I am doing well, Ian. How are you? Good, good. So I was, I was, it's funny. I really, I, the other day I was looking because uh, I wanted to write the review for, for 
designing strength tra- coach. And I, so I, I went back to the video that I did for the podcast that we did about it. And I noticed I was, you know, I had the original copy uh, that one of my first really big influential books from you and like all the highlighting that I did, but I just, the cover had Michael Boyle that biz on the bottom. Uh, and I just thought, man, those are, those are the days of the forum that kind of molded into strengthcoach.com, which was uh, the forum at strengthcoach.com has always been uh, so amazing. So I just thought it was kind of funny to see that Michael Boyle that biz. Yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting when you think about is at that time, we had no idea where this whole thing was going. And I just remember, I think it was probably the Charlie Francis forum that was really good at that time. And I remember Aaron Hardesty. I don't even know if you remember Aaron, but of course Aaron, I remember Aaron, Aaron uh, saying, you really should have a forum. You really should have one of these kind of question and answer type things. So I think he originally, I think he set up the original one and it became really popular. And I always think, there was some people who really started their career, Patrick Ward, Charlie Weingroff, people like that. They started on the forum and they just showed up. And I always remember the conversations thinking, wow, these guys are really smart. Who are these guys? And it was my introduction to some really smart people. Now I think what happens is, and this is what I think is the negative is people don't have time for other people. They don't, they're, they're so like, there's so much stuff going on. The great thing about the michaelboyle.biz was that it was a really good place to learn and it drew really smart people and they interacted. Now I think, again, you know, a lot of those people have moved on, they've gone on in their career, but there, there doesn't seem to have been a next generation of those people because I guess they're, they're looking for the next best thing. They're looking for someplace else. And I still think it's really good. It's amazing that there's still, you know, Brett Jones is still on there regularly the um you know i'm trying to think of some who else somebody just showed up the other day i can't think who it was but somebody came back and i thought wow i haven't heard from them in a really long time so it's uh it's it's a really good and it's exactly what it was intended to be back in the ryan lee days hey we want it to be supportive we want to have a beginner forum we want to have a place where people can go and ask questions and not worry about getting roasted by somebody and we went so far, if you remember, if you remember, of course you remember, but <laughs> elephant never forgets. Uh, <laughs> we kicked people off. Yeah. We kicked I would, I would report to you. I'd be like, Mike, yeah. this is, this has got to go. This yeah. guy's doing this. He's promoting that or whatever. Yeah. We yeah. Kicked a bunch of some people. of it was just, this guy's just being an ass. You know, this guy is in, and that's what I, I still think is great about it is that you can get unfortunately a lot of it now you know it's it's me or it's kevin or it's brendan and you know like i said it, it it's brett you know there's guys like that that are still there answering questions on a regular basis but you can ask a question about anything and get a, a really good polite answer or you can just have a discussion people we have great business discussions people that are building their own facilities people yeah. that are thinking you know i'm gonna buy a facility i'm gonna sell a facility uh, you know programming there's just a lot of really good stuff on there i yeah. enjoy it every day i look forward to going on every day truthfully yeah it's awesome um so you got a clinic coming up at matthew abraham is doing uh the sport performance clinic at endicott college on march 9th uh there's going to be 0.8 ceus kevin carr Marco sanchez lenny kelly matthew uh himself jack dustin and james daly and yourself coach what will you be speaking about there you know what's really interesting <laughs> i have to ask matt what I don't think I gave him a topic yet. I'm thinking okay. there's one that I did called Becoming a Strength and Conditioning Coach that I like. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I'm going to do. But I want to talk to Matt and see. I can't remember what the audience is. If I gave him a topic, if I said, okay. hey, I'll do this. Because yeah. I know I'm doing, uh, uh, I'm going to redo the Start With Why one for the MBSC Winter Seminar. Okay. And I've done the updates to our athlete program a couple times. And in different settings. So I don't think I'll do that one. So I think I may do it. And becoming a strength and conditioning coach is another one that's um, somewhat philosophical in terms of, okay, what do you really have to do if you want to become a strength and conditioning coach? And maybe not just 
from there'll there'll be some X and O stuff in there, some programming stuff, but uh, I think there's a, a little bit more to the um the I don't know the the human side of it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, Coach. What uh when is the uh, the winter seminar? Uh, the winter seminar is actually spring. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I thought it, yeah. Uh, it's after. I'm trying to think because I I've, I've been saying I don't want to speak all that much, and then I find myself. I'm doing one, a chiropractic seminar for Parker Seminars in Las Vegas in February. And then I'm doing mats, I think, two weeks later. And then um, and then I think April is, uh, MBSC. is our MBSC winter cool. slash spring seminar. So I don't think we've done a ton of promotion for that. But that I think actually I do know that's uh, Jake Turr is going to talk. Luca Hosevar is going to talk. Cassie Day is going to talk. I'm going to talk. And then I'm not sure if the staff, I think Jess uh, is going to talk and Kevin and maybe Dan. Okay. Well, it'll be good. You know, same kind of format today. I yeah. Think. And you're going to do, uh, are you only doing Providence for Perform Better this year? I'm, I'm doing, I'm going to do Providence and Orlando. Chris was okay. sort of, uh, Chris had been gently pressuring me like, hey, you know, do you think yeah. we want to do a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of summits and we started looking what I really was trying to figure out was the, uh, um, lacrosse schedule. So figuring out, okay, when, when will Mark's season end? And then, uh, and that'll give me a better idea of where, uh, where yeah. do. I think Orlando falls far enough into, I think it's first week of June. So it every is. Mark will be done yeah. no matter what, but then the other two, Long Beach and Chicago are in like in the summer. And I really, I'm just, I'm so not into traveling in the summer. I'm not into traveling at all, but I'm really not. I, hear you. I don't play. You're getting old. You're getting old. Uh, yeah, you, can, you can take the kids to Disneyland too, or world or whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whatever reason wants to, he won't leave me alone. I don't know what his deal is. Let's, let's have you expand on, there was a thread with the Sportsmith, I guess, article, or I forget where, I think it was Sportsmith. Uh, strength, you wrote, strength and conditioning is crazy. I think we're going backwards. People are advocating for return to joint isolation exercises and machines. I never thought I'd see that, but you did clarify your position. I just wanted you to expand on that a little bit. Yeah, it's just interesting in terms of, so if we're looking at the the physical therapy world there has been a very big influx of the pro leg extensions for ACLs and pro leg extension for knee rehab, which honestly, I never thought I thought sort of functional was here to stay. And that that was going to, that was a big part of rehab and everybody had junked their Cybex machine or their King Kong or their Orthotron. And now all of a sudden I'm seeing an ACL rehab, a really big push towards leg extension and a really big push towards quad hamstring ratio and isolating quads. And it's just stuff that I remember thinking how progressive things were. And now I look at it and think, wow, we're going backwards. We're going back to things that we stopped doing. And I think we stopped doing them for really good reason. And a lot of the, the, the kind of pro leg extension stuff is, is based around the fact that there is now research saying that it is a safe exercise. And I would look at it and say, it may very well be a safe exercise. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's a good exercise. I don't like it. I don't, I never liked them for my own knees. I never liked them. I remember when I first kind of discovered Gary Gray and functional training and all this stuff thinking, well, I mean, I don't have to do sets of leg extensions and leg curls after I'm done with all the stuff I like to do because I'm supposed to do these. And the idea that these kind of non-functional and now everybody's very, it's like people are anti-functional training now. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh no, it's okay, it's great. You know, we want to isolate muscles and we want to use machines. And and it was the same thing. And um, Rob called me out a little bit because I didn't read the whole article that they said, but the guy basically wrote kind of one of these, I would call it a clickbaity kind of, hey, why can't we go back to using machines? And it's just, I am just honestly flabbergasted as a strength and vision coach that this is where we're going but it just shows you the cyclical nature of what we do because people talk about kind of everything that's old is new again and i started doing a presentation actually writing one up on history 
because I, I started with the, the idea of the quote that uh, those who don't know history are destined to repeat it. And I believe that so much when we look at strength and conditioning, people don't look and think, well, gee, why did we stop using the Cybex? Why did we stop using the orthotron? Why did we stop worrying about quad hamstring ratio? Um, and now it's crazy because we have so much better opportunity to collect data. We've got force plates. So you can look, John Palloff's doing a lot of work with the force plate and we can look at the force plate and say, hey, I can get you on the force plate and I can really look at right versus left comparison. But in a very functional, you're, you're jumping vertically and I can look at that and say, okay, what's happening right leg versus left leg? And yet now we've gone back to this sort of seated, isolated quad hamstring ratio kind of stuff. And I'll, here's where I'll get myself in trouble. People are saying the reason that that's happening is because we're not doing a good job isolating the quad in rehab. And I just think that that's just flat out bad physical therapy. I think if you can't get somebody to utilize their quad without having to use a leg extension machine, you probably shouldn't be doing physical therapy. But that one, that'll probably be the uh, the quote that gets me in trouble this month. Yeah. So, but I mean, would you deny the fact that like from the perspective, and this isn't strength and conditioning, or it might be in a, in a, in a freshman year or from a hypertrophy perspective, it could be something that can be added. Would you agree with that or a strength perspective or hypertrophy? Well, you I, can still I get them strong. I look at the bigger picture and think, seriously, mm -hmm. we're going to start clogging up rooms. We've developed these beautiful yeah. functional rooms. Everybody's got these great rooms with racks and Kaiser machines and places to sprint and, and we've and all of a sudden everybody's saying no, but clog them up again. Get buy four leg extensions, buy four leg curls, get some leg presses. I'm like, wait, no. We spent decades trying to undo these weight rooms. We spent all this time trying to say to people, you don't need this stuff. You can have much better. And I people hate the word functional, but it's the right word. You can have better functional equipment, much more multi-use less expensive, takes up less square footage. I mean, there's just so many whys behind mm -hmm. the not machine thing. But I mean, are you going to die if you do a couple sets of machines? No. But when we start looking at setting up a facility allocation of space, one of the things I've always said in my, my kind of anti-machine rants is if I go and say, okay, whatever, let's just say I put a, a some kind of low row or pullover machine or whatever, pull down machine, you know, a plate loaded hammer machine, something like that. I've allotted about 32 square feet of my weight room to that machine. And that's so incredibly inefficient when you look and say, hey, in that 32, or let's just say 24 square feet so people don't argue with me, in that four by six space, guess what? You can do one exercise. One person can do one exercise over there in that 24 square feet. No matter what, any time of the day, one person over there at 24 square feet. Yeah. That is really shitty use of space. When I look at it and think, wow, that's, I might put a power rack there. And in that same little square, I might be able to have three or four people working all day, all different exercises. I might be able to do a hundred different exercises in that same thing. Or I can allocate that square footage to something that does one thing. And that I can, again, I can do it someplace else, right? I can look and think, if someone said to me, would I rather would, would I rather you do split squats or Spanish squats or whatever it is to isolate your quad or have a leg extension machine? I'm like, I think split squats or Spanish squats is going to work better anyway. But the fact that I can do them anywhere with a dumbbell, with a kettlebell, with a Kaiser machine, with a bar on my back versus buying that machine and sticking it in that square footage and saying, yes. This machine allows you to do this. One person can do this at a time yeah. and then somebody else can go. Yeah. It's just flat out regressive. Absolutely. Good stuff. Uh, so, Coach, somebody you, posted. You, know, you are a button pusher extraordinaire, to be honest. You said, <laughs> what can I piss Mike off with? Well, I'm trying to get a rant on for 20 minutes. I, I got to get listeners too, you know? Um, <laughs> so, uh, Mike, uh, not, speaking of another one, somebody posted dumbbell drop broad jumps and box jumps so let's take out the danger of this so well, let me just explain to people what this was 
Uh, the guy showed he was about to do a broad jump. So he had his dumbbells in his hand. He went down on the eccentric and dropped the dumbbells on the way down and did his broad jump. Uh, somebody else said I do those with box jumps as well. Mike, uh, again, I, I understand, you know, you're worried about them dropping on their feet. Both of them said, hey, we've never had any problem with that. Never mind that. What really is the purpose of that? Were they trying to... Um, uh, really extend that uh that ply like that stretch shortening i mean what would be i, I really couldn't figure that out it's really probably a selfish question but what were well, they trying to do there yeah probably they're trying to um accentuate the eccentric when you mm -hmm. really think so i'm going to yeah. have you try to do a, a more loaded eccentric contraction with the theory that when i then release the load i'll produce a, a more powerful concentric contraction that's the idea i've yeah. actually Truthfully, I've tried it. I just didn't think it worked very good. Yeah. And then it's got to be that, timed right, doesn't it? What? It's got to be timed like perfect. It's got to be timed really well. And yes, I mean, you, it, you know, and I've seen people do them with, with swinging the dumbbell. There's all kinds of ways to do it. I just haven't seen it having great value. And then, as again, I, and you know me, Murphy's Law, you said don't, you know, regard this, disregard the injury potential. But you can't disregard the injury potential of somebody dropping it, of somebody like if you do it with box jump, of somebody now maybe failing to get on the box and then coming back down and twisting their ankle on the dumbbell that's in the way. Or there's just sometimes I, I always go back to the is the juice worth the squeeze question. And I look at that and think, is there really that much value to that that I'm willing to take on? the extra risk. And, and I just haven't seen the value. Uh, that's yeah. my own. And I did one of the things and we talked about that yesterday in staff meeting, we, uh, we pulled up a bunch of just Instagram stuff. Like I bookmarked things on Instagram and it was just kind of letting people watch videos and say, I just want you to think about this exercise. And I want you, we talked about thinking about exercises in three different lenses. Think about, okay, think of this exercise with our adults Think of this exercise with our sort of September to May kids, primarily middle school and high school kids. And then think about this in the summer program when we've got college kids, high school kids, pros, our, you know, our, our elite level women, and evaluate those exercises in terms of, hey, would I like this to be in the program? Is this something that I can see us programming in maybe A or B or C kind of groups? And and we do that a lot. We talk a lot about exercises like that. I probably should have brought that one up too, but I tend to bring up more ones that I like than ones that I dislike. And it was just funny because I have Erica, who had been on the podcast the week before, said exactly what I said. No chance. Somebody would drop that on their foot. Somebody. Mm -hmm. It's just, as I said, really, I go back to risk benefit. If If someone said yeah. to me, oh my God, we're getting un like the results from yeah. this are off. It's like band assisted jump. I used to look at band assisted jump and think somebody's going to mash their face into the uh, into the power rack when I'd see how springy people could get. Yeah, and I did. And then I thought hmm, this isn't as dangerous as I thought. And then I tried it and I liked the feel of kind of the un you know unloading and assisting and getting higher and getting a bigger landing force. And, you know, getting people to be able to be bouncy. Like, I like the effects of it. So for me, I'm, I, I think people, people think I'm really rigid. And the reality is I'm not super rigid, but I do have a fairly strong filter. I'm going to look at something and I'm going to think it through. I'm going to say, okay, do I think that this is something that would have value? And for us, and I always go back, I love the Ron Ruska program. Uh, Russ, Ron Ruska quote about will it make your existing program better? That's what I really want to know. Mm -hmm. I think that was a, a great quote in the beginning of the PRI. He said, your PRI is here to help you make your existing program better. And I think that's what we have to yeah. look at. It's anything, whether it's weight releasing jumps, um, you know, depth jumps that I've been, talked about that I'm not a fan of, things like that. I look at a lot of these things and think, will it make our existing program better? Will it provide us something that we're not currently providing yet will meet our sort of risk reward balance idea? Yeah.
I well, I actually when I saw it, the reason why I wanted to bring it up was as well is because if you know you were part of that discussion, and I think people don't understand, even though you might not like it on paper on Twitter, and you might be going back to the lab to try it out to try new ways. That's also I know with a band, it's it's kind of a similar idea. If you have the band, you're doing the band assisted jumps on the way down. You're obviously accentuating the eccentric, but then you're accentuating the concentric yeah. as well. So I was wondering if you had kind of thought, I like this idea. Let me try this another way. That's going to be safer, uh, easier. Yeah. Is- I think it's hard to look at it. Cause I have thought about that. Is there a way to do this and, and release the load in a way that, that I'm not worried about? Because I guess in the broad jump, the other thing we don't broad jump. I don't like broad jump. I've had bad experiences with broad jump because what we found yeah. with broad jump, becomes it's kind of like people try to cheat the landing in everything and when people try to cheat the landing in broad jump you can end up in a really compressed situation and we had i still i remember kavika Pittman. he was a second round nfl draft pick and he strained his acl during our combine prep because we were training because long jump is one of the events in the combine so we would practice long jump and and everybody, you know, what do they do when they're practicing, when they're trying to increase their long jump? They start trying to accentuate the, or I guess they try to land as deep as they can. Yep. And so we've never been broad jump people as a result of that. Uh, that day was enough. I was like, okay, I just had a second round draft pick get hurt. Whatever. Two weeks before the combine and doing something. And I thought, Ooh, I'm not doing that anymore. And yeah. I, talk about this i talked about this in yesterday's staff meeting too sometimes i swear off stuff and maybe for the wrong reasons but you keep the reason or you keep the i don't do that exercise in your head and then because we were talking about uh someone was showing split jumps like split squat jumps yeah and we never do split squat jumps and i can remember now this you're going to see how old this was I can remember Mike Sullivan, Penguins head coach Mike Sullivan, <laughs> being like crippled as a player Ugh. when we did a bunch of split squat jumps. Just like, oh my God, the leg soreness. And I remember thinking, wow, those really make your legs sore. I don't like those. Now I look back at it and think, based on the amount of unilateral stuff that we do, would we still see that? Yeah. The answer is probably not. But in my mind, I'm like, we don't do split position jumps, period. And there was actually a good, uh, the Elon guys, Nick DeMarcos guys had a good post about split position stuff and they were doing split stance, uh, like depth jumps and they were doing split stance verticals on Twitter the other day. And I thought, hmm, that's we, we probably need to be looking more at explosive unilateral you know, exercises done out of those split positions than we have done in the past yeah yeah interesting i will keep us posted on that but coach we will let you go on that no thanks for doing this and we will talk to you next time yeah it is always a pleasure thank you welcome back to nominees maximizing the member experience segment where we delve into the strategies and tactics that elevate your gym and keep your members coming back for more today We're exploring a dynamic strategy that can elevate your business and foster connections, bringing in local guest speakers. Imagine the impact of hosting a local nutritionist, physical therapist, or wellness coach as a guest speaker. Not only does it provide valuable knowledge to your staff, but it's also an opportunity for direct engagement with your members. This dual benefit can significantly enhance your gym's network referrals, and retention rates. Bringing in local experts for staff training sessions is a game changer. These speakers offer fresh perspectives, share industry insights, and equip your team with new tools and techniques. This investment in staff training not only enhances their skill, but also boosts morale and job satisfaction. Providing opportunities for continuous learning and exposure to industry leaders can significantly boost your team's satisfaction and loyalty. When your staff feels invested in, 
they're more likely to stay and contribute positively to your gym's growth. As for your clients, hosting seminars or workshops led by these local experts creates added value for your members. Topics like nutrition, injury prevention, or mental wellness are not only informative, but also provide a platform for members to engage with professionals they might not have easy access to otherwise. Now, here's the networking goldmine. When local experts interact with your members, it establishes your gym as a hub for holistic wellness. It builds trust and credibility, encouraging these experts to refer their clients to your facility. This symbiotic relationship can drive new business and referrals while solidifying your position in the community. Additionally, Consider inviting local business owners or community leaders for talks on entrepreneurship, motivation, or goal setting. This not only diversifies the topics, but also broadens your network beyond the health and fitness sphere. Remember, these events don't have to be grand. They can range from intimate Q&A sessions to larger scale workshops. The key is in the value they provide to both your staff and members. And encourage your members to bring a guest even more opportunities for you to win additional business and solidify your authority as the trusted source. In summary, hosting local guest speakers is a win-win-win. It enhances staff expertise, elevates the member experience, and strengthens your gym position in the community. It's about creating connections that benefit everyone involved. All right, then, this is Summit Seth, co-founder of Anomaly, and I hope today's segment inspires you to tap into your local network and bring in guest speakers who can add untapped value to your gym. If you like more of these ideas, then hit me up at summitanomaly.com with the subject line, Strength Coach Retention Secrets, and I'll share a guide that we've put together with nine secrets that you can use to increase your member retention. All right, guys, now it's time for the Hit the Gym with the Train Coach segment brought to you by AG1, 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. I'm using it every day, kind of fills in the gaps in my nutrition. Used to use it in the morning, kind of use it in the afternoon, kind of been using it as a little bit of a pick-me-up. It's been working. So they're going to give you free a one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and 5 free travel packs. With your first purchase, all you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash strength coach. All right. I got my old friend on Allie Cooper. And actually, it's funny because Allie actually is one of the people in this industry who I knew in person before I knew online. Uh, they're calling her the queen of men's health, the founder of the Silverback Summit and Silverback Coaching by Allie G. Allie, thanks for doing this. You called me your old friend. <laughs> yeah, she kind of feels old. <laughs> it is. It is. I mean, we're we're. It's minimum fifteen years. Minimum. Oh like, yeah. Yeah. So that's an old friend. Yeah. I mean, we didn't go to high school together, or nothing, but whatever. I mean, we might as well have. <laughs> yeah. So, what? What's how up? did this happen? What? Look. Bottom line is, uh, Coach Boyle a couple weeks ago was was talking about steroids. And then I had asked him about that Twitter uh, post and, and kind of got a little bit into TRT. And I, I actually did mention you that I do think you, you have, um, although you're a little over the top, but uh, that has nothing to do with your message. Um, is, is that, you know, um, I think you do a great job of being responsible with TRT. There's no there's no, no secret that anybody who follows you, that you, you're, you talk a lot about TRT and, and you recommend it. And, uh, but it's not like you're handing it out like candy. There's a lot that you make sure people do. And I really wanted to get you on here to kind of dispel some of that myths and, and rumors. And we've had you on before, but this stuff is so – I was listening to Dr. Atia today uh, again and just kind of trying to you know get some thoughts in my head and it's just so confusing and there's so much to it and you know i you and i were talking about my blood panel panel and there's so many things that you know if you don't you, it's so confusing so i wanted to get you on to do this but um so let's start out with this like okay 
if somebody comes in to see me, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to give them a questionnaire. I want to talk, I want to know all about sports they played and things they do and what they do on a daily basis and you know, whatever. And then uh, maybe I'll give them some kind of a movement screen. If it's a golfer, TPI screen, right? A uh, regular person, maybe a functional movement screen. And then we did design a program. And we might talk about some nutrition and start to see some of those habits. Great. Talk to me about if I'm coming to you, Silverback Coaching, because I want to get to how we get to TRT and or how we even get to that. But let's take a step back. Because you're not, no one's, you're not just, hey, Ali's TRT clinic, you know, it's, uh, so let's talk about that and like, talk about what you do uh, and, and kind of, you can talk a little bit about how you kind of got pushed into this idea. We both know it's from golf, but originally that's our demographic, these older men. Um, so give me, give us an idea of, of exactly what, what's going to happen when they, when they, somebody starts coaching with you. Sure. Um, so now that we're all online, uh, because I did used to train people in person back when you and I knew each other in person before our online relationship. Um, so like you said, I fell into men's health through golf fitness because golf fitness brought me all men as a clientele. And I realized that, you know, they would be like, yeah, I want to hit the ball farther. I want to move better, but how do I get abs? How do I fill out my shirt? You know, how do I get like a little more muscle like here and there? And so that was where the conversation kind of der like ended up going. And a lot of that, as you know, you have the nutrition conversation, you have the stress management conversation, and that also bleeds into, well, it, you know, how are you managing stress? How are you reacting to it? Does this bring on any sexual performance issues, which is not something men expect when they're coming in or seeking somebody out for fitness. So online, everybody kind of knows what they're getting into when they find me due to my over the topness, as you say, mm -hmm. um, and you know what I talk about online. So what, what the guys tell us, because they fill out an application for coaching. And I always ask, like, you know, maybe why do you feel that we're the solution? Or, you know, what brings you to us? And they say that you guys bring together the hormone piece of men's health in addition to the nutrition and training. So if they come on as a client, they get a very in-depth questionnaire about their dieting history, their health history, uh, injuries, all that stuff. And then um, we, we develop a nutrition approach for them that works with their lifestyle and what they are seeking to do. And same thing with the strength training program based on what their goal is. And then the hormone piece comes in uh, where if a guy maybe is at another clinic and is on testosterone or it's something that he's considering and just hasn't really pulled the trigger on that, I can talk them through what that looks like and help disarm any of the preconceived fears or mixed messages that you've alluded to that are out there because it can be very overwhelming because if you Google it, you're going to find a whole bunch of shit that's just you know, it's going to kill you. It's going to cause a heart attack, stroke and all that stuff. So if they haven't had their labs done, they'll get their blood work done. And then we can determine, okay, you might be a candidate for testosterone, or we've got to clean up some of these inflam inflammatory markers that are showing high and maybe some blood sugar issues or Maybe somebody's drinking too much alcohol. So obviously whatever they're doing outside of the gym will be reflected in blood work. And it's good to know where someone is. Guys don't really get lab work done. Um, a lot of the guys I, I talk to who are not on testosterone have never had their testosterone checked, no matter what age. So encouraging them that, hey, it's probably a good idea to see where you stand based on what you're going through in life right now. That way we have something to compare it to as you go through the journey with us, or if you do end up on testosterone, then we know where you started. Yeah, I can't uh, stress the lab piece enough. Uh, I was using Inside Tracker. I just love the simplicity and and uh, the way they the way they do it, and the fact that I live in Indiana now, it's much easier because in New York, you weren't allowed. I, Robert Yang, we did it one time, and I had it. Uh, I had it delivered to Ana. <laughs> or uh, Ali and I, our mutual friend in Connecticut, because you're allowed to, we we're allowed to do it in Connecticut. So I use my address as Connecticut. So anyway, um, so I, the lab really does 
is a game changer because now you're starting to look. And it's, although it's still very confusing, I think Inside Tracker does a great job because I wasn't going through somebody like you. I was going through, uh, they, they, they lay everything out for you. So, okay. So now let's get to the kind of what, what, what's going to make you recommend or not recommend the TRT. So if somebody comes in and all right, they, they have, cause it's not just low T like I have high T, but we talked about it earlier. Uh, the last time I did it and I'll just go over those numbers. So everyone will use me as a guinea pig. So my T was, my testosterone was 895, but my free testosterone was 10.3, which you said is low. And then what was the other one, Allie, we're looking at, uh, um, SHBG or sex hormone binding globulin, which will bind your free testosterone. And that's okay. So that. mine was high. Uh, it said normal, by the way, and I know uh, <laughs> you you have a problem with that as well. It said normal, but my uh, mine was high. I, I like, and for me, I don't want normal. I want optimal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right, especially right now because optimal is the old normal, uh, right? So you were saying earlier. Talk to us a little bit about that. Those numbers have changed. Yeah. So it, it, this goes back to when, when, so traditionally, so say somebody doesn't know I exist and they're thinking of maybe getting blood work done. Logically, you would think that going to a GP or an endocrinologist or somebody who deals with that would be the right decision. And the problem with that being more insurance based is there's restrictions there. So there is, there's ranges for every blood marker on lab. The ranges for men's testosterone is based on an average of what is showing up in America, whether you're 20, 80, sick, obese, whatever, that is the average. It does not take into account the average of men who are on testosterone and it doesn't really take into account healthy men. So basically, this range has also decreased over the last couple decades because guys' testosterone levels are lower and lower. So if you go by insurance, which wants you to qualify for testosterone based on these numbers, you're basically SOL because the, the range used to be 350 was the lowest and it went up to around 1100. So now it, it, I have heard as low as 186 going up to in the seven or 800. So they would look at your total team be like, oh, you're off the charts. You don't need testosterone just by the total number itself. Mm -hmm. So men are being turned away if they go through insurance with a test level of 200, 250, 400, and they can be 28 years old. They can be 33 years old. And they're like, well, yeah, I'm normal. And so I never trust normal. If they've had labs through that arena or that uh, pathway with a GP or something like we know that that's just going to be something that's not going to end up well. So that is the first mistake is to think that the GP or somebody else through insurance is going to be the right answer. And I tell guys like, listen, a GP is always a good thing to have if you get sick or if you need like a Z pack or something like that, that's what you want to use a GP for. But we know our healthcare system is not set up to make people feel optimal. It's more sick care. So preventative or anything that is looking that anything that would fall under the category of trying to, you know, delay aging or feel your best or all of that does not fall under insurance. So that's the first step. And these ranges now are so awful that guys are made to think, well, yeah, I'm normal, but they have symptoms. And most men consider my testosterone, you know, my testosterone levels are fine because I don't have any boner issues. And I'm like, it's not the only thing it's related to. Mm -hmm. And most guys will be dealing with fatigue and brain fog and just like overall apathetic attitude and not having the motivation to really win and perform like at work or at home or anything like that. And they don't know why. And that gets chalked up as depression. So they could be told that they're depressed and then they're handed an antidepressant, which is going to make it work. So then they go through this vicious cycle because men don't want to go to the doctor anyway, where they got dismissed. They don't have enough ammo to really combat what the doctor says. So they're just going to listen to what he said and go home, feel awful, and then deal with it. And they don't know that there are other avenues that they can go through. Like you mentioned, we personally have partnered with Merrick Health last year 
where they have their own ranges that are optimal to show people that, hey, you may have been dismissed before, but actually this is a problem and this is something that should be addressed. So if somebody is symptomatic, no matter what their age, it's always important to see where they start to know, okay, this is your T level, this is your free T level, but this is everything else that you might be dealing with that is reflective of what's going on and how you're feeling. And as you know, being a man, sometimes you guys need to see that on paper in order for it to be true. And the analogy I use is like, you know, when we're kids and we're running around crazy and like, you know, riding bikes off of uh, cliffs or whatever, like, you know, people are warning us like, oh, you're not going to want to do that. You know, when you get older, you know, you're going to be this or that. And like, no one cares. No one's worried about how we're going to feel when we're older. Right. So unless you can tangibly understand that this is a problem, then it's hard to say, yeah, you know, I may not feel so good, but maybe it's because I'm depressed or maybe it's because I'm going through a stressful time at work or all of that. But all of that has an effect on whether you're performing optimally as a man. Every man has the right to know, are you functioning and performing optimally as you should be right now biologically? And that's what getting your sex hormones tested will show. And to be turned away from that right because of the way you look or because you don't have any sexual performance problems, then I think that's doing a disservice to men being able to be the best version of themselves. Cool. So let's go over really quick. Uh, you mentioned some of the symptoms. I want to make sure we capture them all. Fatigue, brain fog, uh, uh, sexual performance, uh, motivation, morning, morning wood. Right. Yeah. Uh, 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 what else from that perspective person comes in and then I'll ask you more about the markers. Um, some guys have very high anxiety um, and some guys also can experience um, some levels of introversion. But then again, like there are guys who have very high T levels and are very introverted and, you know, it doesn't always show up that way, but it, it could be something to consider. So it, it's, thinking of all your hormones as this orchestration of, of a symphony working together. And I think men tend to just hyper-focus on testosterone and they wear that as their bench press number. Well, my total T is, you know, this it's I'm yeah. 900, so I'm good. And it's like, well, you might not be. And they may not admit freely to I'm struggling and I have brain fog and I don't feel like myself or, you know, my work performance has suffered but they're not going to offer that information freely or the sexual performance stuff compared to women who are very social about this and are very open and talking about hormones and hormone replacement and menopause and all of that stuff. Guys don't talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Ali, one thing too, I think that is kind of a barrier as well is this idea of, and it's changing people like you, people like I'm um, listening to Dr. Atia a lot. Um, just talking about um, where as we age, there was this idea of, well, I'm just getting older, right? I was listening to one of Atia's guests saying like, okay, you know, when you're in your 40s, like a 40% chance that you're, you know, 50s, it's 50. It's easy to remember, 60. So as you go, there is more of a chance your testosterone and all of these things are going to happen. So sometimes it's like, you're, uh, you're getting tired. Well, you're, you're old and you're not as motivated. Yeah. You're, you're now you're in your fifties. Now that's gotta be a little bit like where I think some people are looking at and saying, or some men are looking at and saying, yeah, it's supposed to happen like this. Right. Yeah. They, they, they think of that and then they chalk it up to age and then they see people who are the same age as them and they're just living life like they should. And then that can trigger some jealousy, but then they're like, well, they have more motivation to work out or more time or whatever. And there's absolutely no reason that you should be suffering due to what you think is age related. Like you and I are always getting people who say, well, I'm 50 now, so I shouldn't be doing this exercise. And it's like, but is that really the reason just because you turned a certain number? Like if you were 49 yesterday, like, does that mean it just changes like overnight like that? Like, you know, that, that seems absurd. There's plenty of Guys, there's a guy at my gym, and I think he's 75. He's Olympic lifting. And he's like trying to get me to Olympic. Li I'm like, I, I'm good. Like, you know, he could you're like, like, I'm oh, too old. <laughs> yeah, I'm too old. It's like, you have a great, uh, you have a great snatch, a uh, great snatch, <laughs> snatch grip deadlift. I don't see that a lot. You know, do you Olympic lift? And I'm like, I have no desire to do that. But I commended him for his ability to do that. 
especially as somebody who has, uh, you know, retired from competing in that. And, you know, I think like age is just the number and, and that saying can definitely be true. And there's no reason that somebody should feel defeated in any way or rob themselves of living a high quality life the rest of their life just based off of a biological age. Yeah. Yeah. So we have those, uh, these symptoms. Okay. That, you know, you just gave us the list and now you get your lab, the labs in, and then you're going to look at a bunch of things. It's like you just said, it's not just T or free T or H uh, BG. Um, what else are you looking at to say, Hey, you might be a candidate for TRT. So Cholesterol is one of them, but that is also multifaceted because a basic lipid panel, which is total cholesterol, LDL, HDL, um, apolipoprotein A and B and stuff like that, tells part of the picture, but not the whole thing. So if somebody's truly worried about their cardiovascular health, there is more extensive testing available that they should absolutely explore. Because now we know that having high cholesterol is not bad. There's actually no such thing as bad cholesterol. Um, I have one of the best cardiologists ever in my silverback network, who is the one who taught me that, where he freely says that. And he talks about the fact that you could have a cholesterol over 200 and it's not alarming. And there are different ways to think about it. And it can be based off diet and lifestyle and family history and all of that. But people hear that testosterone increases cholesterol and actually it can bring it down if that's what's ne necessary. Um, that in addition to infl inflammation, so somebody who is inflamed, meaning like their CRP is high, they've got maybe high homocysteine, they have that in addition to high triglycerides, high insulin, stuff like that means that either their diet sucks, which we know a lot of people don't eat the right way, or they just are overwhelmed and misinformed by all the propaganda out there, or they have a lot of body fat. And somebody who has a lot of body fat, body fat is the most inflammatory tissue. So dropping body fat is literally the most simple solution to being able to live a more optimal life. It just seems like that's crazy. That's all I have to do is drop body fat. And honestly, if somebody drops body fat, if somebody gets leaner, and for men, that's more towards 15%. They will actually not only live a higher quality life, if they go on TRT, it will work better for them because their body is not trying to reject and suppress a hormone. So if they do get it exogenously and they have high body fat, their body is like, oh, what's going on? I don't want this hormone in me. I'm going to cause a cascade of side effects because this person is actually overweight. Whereas if a guy lowers his body fat, gets in good shape, gets healthy, gets resilient, and then ends up on TRT. It can be a game changer for him. We see it all the time in our coaching and men feel amazing. And it, it's really cool to see the transformation that happens, not only physically, but mentally, emotionally. I mean, everything. Yeah. So let's take a step back with that body fat um, uh, idea because, okay, now somebody comes in and they're feeling pretty good. By the way, again, listening to Outlive and Peter Atiyah's stuff, uh, talks about his, the four horsemen, uh, which is, you know, cancer, heart disease, some kind of, you know, a brain, cognitive, like dementia, Alzheimer's type thing, and um, uh, like type 2 diabetes or, right? That, that. So the weight, he said, really, when you look at that piece first, it can cause the other th three. So getting that body comp down less incidence of cancer, less incidence of cardiovascular disease, and less incidence of some of the cognitive function, uh, degenerative diseases that you can have. So what for you is kind of a, uh, because again, you could say 50, I'm 57, I'll be 57 next month. And if I look at the numbers based on my age, I might be okay, but no, I don't want to be okay. I want to be optimal. What do you want to see people at? Uh, before they get on the TRT or what, what's, what like, cause this does seem to be a misconception. The, and there's two directions to go with this because it can be a double-edged sword. So say somebody is, is over 15% body fat. So typically 
that person does not feel amazing. They know they've got body fat to lose. What does that look like visually? You don't have visible abs. You probably have love handles, back fat, belly fat for a man. So if we can handle that piece, then that is going to put them in a better position to be on TRT, but also, like you said, combat the risk of cardiovascular problems, diabetes, type two diabetes is absolutely reversible. Like we've, we've done that. We've seen that happen. We've seen hemoglobin A1Cs go from 10 to 15 down to 5.3, 5.4. So that absolutely can happen through diet and lifestyle uh, interventions. But guys who are overweight and in poor health might also need testosterone in order to kickstart that motivation to get them going. And so the solution there would be maybe they need a lower dose to start them off to kind of accelerate that motivation. But typically when we have guys who come on, I'm like, all right, you need more of a, what I call GPP for TRT approach, which is getting you healthy. Let's get the body fat off let's get you doing more aerobic work because men avoid that like the plague because they think that, oh, well, that's not going to make me muscular. That's not going to, you know, my muscles are going to fall off. Um, we know that's wrong and that's not the way to look at it, but we get them in a more healthy position. So we tend to have a lower carb approach in that initial phase because that will help bring body fat down, but it also takes the glucose load off their mitochondria because we're trying to build healthy mitochondria through the aerobic approach. Then as they get leaner, they do become more insulin sensitive and they are able to tolerate carbohydrates a lot better. So then we'll start increasing carbs as they get leaner. As we transition into a more hypertrophy approach, then we can start building muscle. Then we transition into a strength approach and then it's just a cycle of strength and hypertrophy. And then we match the diet to that. And typically what our guys tend to experience is the lower their body fat gets, the higher their carbohydrates are, and they were never able to envision themselves eating that many carbs or feeling that good. Oh, I can eat like 300 grams of carbs and I don't fall asleep. Oh, this is actually like helping me perform in the gym. And so we kind of pivot the focus on just body composition to performance, to how they feel, how much their weight is going up in the gym how they're uh, executing all their workouts, how they're recovering. And then the body composition just kind of falls as a byproduct. And then in turn, their sleep improves, their mood improves, their confidence improves because they're starting to get like bicep veins and see their abs and everything. So it's really cool. And this whole continuum works really freaking well because we do it with every single guy. Not everyone's on the same program, but they do go through that same approach. And if we get guys who are leaner and maybe they've tried to gain mass, but they did it the wrong way where they ate too much too soon and gained body fat and then slashed their calories too quickly and then they felt skinny fat and then they went through that cycle, mm -hmm. maybe we don't have to start with the higher rep, more aerobic approach. Maybe we can start with more of a hypertrophy approach with a lower carb if needed. So everybody obviously has their own contextual way of starting, but that initial phase for men who are overweight tends to work quite well because it's something they've never done, something they don't want to do, but they know they need to do. And they have the accountability of a coach to guide them through it. So what's the percentage that you'd like to kind of get them? Was it, is it 15? Do you want to get them to 15? Yeah. So if somebody's at even if, if they're at 17, 18, they're in their late fifties, you're, you're, you're saying, no, we still got to get that lower. I mean, that's not like the, you know, the law, like mm -hmm. you must yeah. be 50, you know, but yeah, yeah. Let, let's work toward down that way. Yeah. So it's not like if they all of a sudden they get their body fat measured and it's like, oh, 15. Okay. Now we can transition to this. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I also like tell guys not to measure their body fat so often. Like we have guys that do it every month and I'm like, stop. And then, you know, they're obsessed with it. I get it. I used to be that way. We have guys who do DEXA scans and I'm like, we only really need to do that twice a year because visually you could tell when somebody is dropping body fat. The tell is visible abs and the love handles reducing and then their clothes fitting better. Because you and I both know you can look completely different and maybe only drop like two pounds. Totally, totally. Um, yeah. So now 
what are um when we look at this when we look at uh we, we talked about these symptoms and then we talked about some of the panels right what are some of the things that we can do in general to keep testosterone up like i think i've heard i remember during when charlie was at ram phones he was talking a lot about um heavy lifting right that's going to contribute to it i've heard you talk about uh you know obviously keeping the body fat off as much as we can uh, uh drinking uh out of plastic bottles a, a lot of the microwave stuff can you just give us a, a list of really good practice that we can do to make sure that we're we're we can maybe increase testosterone without anything if we can um uh, without any help uh what are some things we could do in in our daily lives like sleep right obviously yeah movement obviously i think that you know people now i believe like they consider going for a walk like a workout like did yeah. you train today and they're like yeah i walked for 20 minutes and then i'm like yeah you're supposed to do that like every day multiple yeah. times a day yeah um so it's moving more and maybe lifting things more often than you are now if you're only doing two days a week. Um, alcohol is a big one. And that's something where I used to be on the fence of like, well, moderation is okay and stuff like that. If you are in the hole and your health is just really bad and you just want to optimize your testosterone as much as you can and increase your condition, I would eliminate alcohol altogether just because mm -hmm. it is a toxic, toxic substance. And then maybe that's something that we can revisit later on. But at least in the initial stages, like let's get rid of anything that's going to pull you away from being able to achieve what you want to do. If you're going to do this naturally, that's going to drag you down because not only does it suppress hormone production, does it fuck up your sleep, but also it's just you're not going to be able to perform at your best. Um, sunlight is a huge one. I think that we've realized the importance of sunlight, not only for vitamin D, but also for circadian rhythm that will help you get to bed at a good time. Um, mindfulness and meditation is one of those like woo woo subjects. And so I don't encourage guys to meditate because I think that comes off as woo woo, but I encourage them to take a break in a way where maybe you're alone with your thoughts. Like how terrifying is it to sit on a porch with no phone, no stimulus, nothing. And you're just like alone with your thoughts. Like we did that all the time growing up, but for somebody to be without any type of contact with the world or any stimulus, it's like the most terrifying thing. That might actually be really good. Go for a walk without music, go for a walk without any way to contact anybody. So I think that is huge for guys to find that type of time where they can just be alone with their thoughts and maybe take a break, take a nap, whatever that looks like for you. Um, making sure that you're getting quality food. So eating whole foods, meaning real things. So not just living on protein shakes and fake foods. Um, also a multivitamin can go a long way. A lot of people don't take a multivitamin. They take everything else. And I'm like, why don't you have a multivitamin. Well, I don't think I need it. And I'm like, but you have 25 other supplements and you're not <laughs> actually covering the bases. So there's a lot in there, especially if it's high quality, like you're going to take four or six pills within a high quality multivitamin. You might as well knock out a lot of what you're missing in those pills. Um, in addition to, you know, creatine, fish oil, vitamin D, healthy zinc levels, stuff like that, that can all help to keep you more optimal. And then Diet wise, everyone's always like, well, what's the best diet for TRT or whatever? And I'm like, there's no special diet if you're on TRT or not. So if you're looking to optimize it naturally, I would not try to eliminate a macro altogether. So you and I talked offline. Well, what raises sex hormone binding globulin? Because SHBG can bind up your free testosterone, which means that your body doesn't have the ability to use it. Very low carb diets can do that carnivore diets can do that and um you can also like deprive of your body of a lot of nutrients that can come from plants so i'm not saying plant-based but if you have plants with meat on top of it that's a great approach meat and vegetables is literally like the most old school way of eating i don't know why we deviated from that but we've demonized every <laughs> macronutrient like per decade right so now like protein is like 
you know, the worst thing ever, according to the media. Fiber will probably be next. Like, I think we're out of things to demonize. Yeah. Unless you go back in the circle and then it's like, carbs are bad, fat is bad, like all that stuff. So, you know, those are things that like waking up at the same time every day, like just simple steps of living a higher quality, high performing life that will help yield those higher testosterone levels. And I think a big part of that also can be social, hanging out with people that actually support you, support what you're about, are about living a high quality lifestyle, you know, have the same vision as you, the same goals and stuff like that, because that's something that's also missing from a lot of men's lives. A lot of guys don't have close friends. A lot of guys don't have somebody they can share things that they maybe never would with anybody else anymore. So community is a big part of that. Good stuff. So I, I really wanted to talk about that to kind of let people understand that that's not what you, you don't, they don't go to you. And then it's like, Hey, put a little shot right in your culo. Um, no. And you know, I realize a- that that that's how it can be perceived. Sure. But the, the reason why I talk about that so much is to diffuse the fears of men, because there are a lot of guys that, first of all, they don't even know that TRT stands for testosterone replacement therapy. They don't know how useful and helpful it can be and how game changing but there is a but there because all that stuff we just talked about is extremely important. And it's also not a panacea. You just don't take a shot. And then all of a sudden you become the most jacked, healthy person on planet earth. There's plenty of guys on testosterone that don't even look like they're on testosterone, according to the stereotype of what may be drawn with that, because there are so many stigmas. Yeah. People kind of just are equating it with steroids, right? Would you agree? Is yes. that one of the myths, right? Yep, because steroid steroid act in the 90s, which started with Ben Johnson being uh, dinged for Winstrol and all of that then classified those as steroids and illegal, basically. So a lot of things that like our anabolic steroids actually used to be prescribed for things like breast cancer and stuff like that, like Mastron, um, uh, even like Winstrol, stuff like that, that actually is illegal now. So it gets dumped into that because you don't think of women's hormones as like, you don't think of estrogen as being this like anabolic hormone that's going to put all these muscles on. And because bodybuilders take it to look a certain way that men associate that, oh, as soon as I go on TRT, I'm going to look like them. And I'm like, no, you're not. And you and I know like golfers next to women are the ones that are like afraid of lifting. So they're like (laughs) super afraid of like going on TRT. Like, oh, I don't want to be that big. And I'm like, Let me ask you a question. Do you think that, you know, Phil Heath injected testosterone and just sat on the couch and never went to the gym and did nothing? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, these guys are working out twice a day at watching every macro that they can possibly, every calorie they're measuring and stuff. And they're like, and they're trying to get big and they're still having, they have to do all that. So yeah. Even our clients, like we have guys who are trying to get bigger even the guys who are not on TRT, like that is always the majority of these guys' goals is to gain more muscle mass. It is very difficult. Losing fat is so, so much easier and it's so much faster. And gaining muscle is like this glacial po- like process that takes a very long time. So that misinformation of thinking that, oh, well, and also the dosage, like the testosterone replacement dosage is going to be way smaller than what bodybuilders and professional bodybuilders are taking and they're stacking it with a bunch of other stuff to induce muscle growth, not just testosterone. So testosterone replacement is literally replacing what you should already be biologically producing. So if you are at that level, that's where you're supposed to naturally be anyway. So it may help augment recovery. And yes, it may help you put on muscle mass if you were struggling with that before, but you still have to get in the gym. You still have to have an impeccable diet. You still have to eat according to those goals, do what is necessary to look that way. And still, even then, it's hard. Yeah. So we have some symptoms. We've been over this now and gone over some of the markers you look at and, and how you take those big rocks and really focus on the big rocks first before you're even going to work with, the, not work with them, get them uh, to, to do some of those things. Ali, what are some of the things that we, that aren't myths that we might've heard? Uh, because again, 
we're grouping TRT with, with steroids. So we're like, oh, you know, we're going to go bald or we're going to do this. This is going to happen or that's going to happen. So what are some of the things are, you know, the pot? I know there's been some, uh, some issues with people thinking that might hurt with cardiovascular disease. And I guess you might have alluded to that with the cholesterol. Like that's where they might, maybe that's where they get it from. I don't know. But what are some of the things that we do need to kind of, worry about if we're going to do this. And that's why you have to take this approach, a slow rolling approach. Yeah. So the bigger impactful fears would be cardiovascular and prostate cancer, I would say. Um, and there used, there was older studies that had correlated testosterone with cardiac events. There's now tons of studies showing how low testosterone is actually a risk factor for a cardiovascular event. So Having having that information is very helpful because there are, are many cardiologists that still dismiss testosterone as any type of intervention because they feel it's going to be harmful. Obviously, I'm not telling somebody if you have a history of this or whatever that you're you know free and clear. Obviously, get checked by a medical professional. But that was one of the main fears that, oh, I'm going to have a heart attack if I go in testosterone. So now that we have information that says otherwise, I think men can feel a little bit better about exploring, are they a candidate for it? Same with the prostate cancer thing. There was, it, it's actually still based off a study in 1941 that showed um, the prostate growing at onset of testosterone replacement therapy or exogenous testosterone. And now it shows that that growth stops at a certain level. So you can inject beyond that level and the prostate's not going to grow anymore. However, that does not mean you're going to get prostate cancer. And there are actually zero studies that show causation of testosterone with prostate cancer. It's only correlation. And one of the um, experts in that, Dr. Jordan Grant, who's in my Silverback Network, talks very openly about this. And he's had patients with active prostate cancer on TRT. Usually most urologists would have a conniption if that were even considered, but he shows, he talks about the studies and he talks about how that, that is not something that guys necessarily need to worry about. Same thing though, get with the medical professional. Maybe you talk to Jordan. I don't know. First step is always going to be lab work. Family history gets in consideration. Like all of that gets taken into consideration. So any doctors that are saying you cannot go into testosterone because you will get cancer are doing somebody a disservice because they're just not up on the recent um, literature that it is showing otherwise. Those are the big ones. Um, other ones that men feel, tend to struggle with, which I didn't actually realize initially until I started working with a lot of guys on this, was having to make a lifelong commitment because they don't want to be reliant on something exogenous for the rest of their lives. And I was like, I didn't understand that at first because women are very like, oh, this will help me. So I will do this. And guys are more resistant and they feel like they're almost succumbing to something they couldn't control on their own or they feel defeated in a certain type of way. And I tell them, listen, you can go on testosterone. And if you come off, like nothing's going to kill you if you come off. Like it's not like a pharmaceutical that's keeping you alive. However, if you do come off, you probably won't feel very good. Your testosterone levels are not necessarily going to be any higher and your quality of life may not continue to improve. And I don't have any clients who have gone on TRT and then been like, you know what, this is not for me and come off of it. So most men just don't want to deal with something lifelong, but it's no different than if you have to be on thyroid medication for the rest of your life. Like pretty much you're replacing a hormone that you're not producing anymore. So Yes, it will suppress your own production. However, if your own production is not getting to where you need it to be, then that becomes somewhat of a moot point. Um, you mentioned hair loss. Um, guys are definitely fearful, like, oh, if I go on TRT, I'm going to lose my hair. So if you're genetically predisposed to losing your hair, you may speed up that process with TRT. But when they see hair loss in bodybuilders, there are other anabolics that are far more powerful for hair loss than testosterone. If you're not genetically predisposed, then it's not something that's going to happen. There's plenty of guys on TRT that have great hair. So yeah, you know, those are, those are pretty much the typical ones. Some of them think like it'll cause roid rage and it doesn't. It's actually guys who have very low T that tend to be more moody and stuff like that. Um, 
and I think like acne is is something that can be mitigated and this all has to do with the proper protocol as well. So similar to the fitness industry having antiquated approaches to certain exercises, the medical industry has antiquated protocols for our TRT. An example of that would be a one shot a week or less. And we know that it's more beneficial for a man to inject. If they're doing injections, it's twice a week at minimum, maybe three days, or they can do every day because you want it to align more with your natural release pattern. And then if they're on cream, that's typically once or twice a day applications scrotally. And that's where the skin is most permeable down there. Uh, we, we don't really hear about like things like androgel anymore um, because those are not optimal delivery methods. There are things like pellets, nasal sprays, oral pills, all ways to monetize something that is a naturally produced hormone. So your best bet is to go with injections or cream, in my opinion, and the practitioners that are in my network promote that as well. Yeah. So I guess it's confusing because we're talking about some some lifestyle changes that we really that caused low that probably caused low T. Obviously, there's some genetics in there too. So um we're talking about lifestyle changes, and then we make those changes. And let's say I go on it for two years. So I've, I've decreased my body fat because I'm following your coach and I've decreased my body fat. I've, I'm um, exercising a lot, uh, you know, enough, a lot. Uh, I'm still maintaining muscle. Um, and then I had this, these, this TRT treatment and now uh, I've got my diet dialed in and now I can, it, it would make sense to be able to say, okay, I can start to lower the dose and slowly get off of it because I, I've done all the right things. I've made those lifestyle changes. I'm doing all the things that I, I can to keep my testosterone production healthy or at the right numbers. So I guess that's why it seems weird that you would have to go on it forever. It seems, you know, I, you know what I mean? Like this in my head, I thought it, I did too. I thought it would be like, a, Hey, you're supposed to be on it for X amount of time, not for the rest of your life. Yeah, no, it it is lifelong. Uh, a, a steroid cycle is something that you start and come off of. So then, and there are guys that cycle testosterone, but it, they don't feel great when they come off. Similar to anabolic steroids are to be cycled and not stayed on the rest of your life because those can be way more harmful to your health. But this is probably one, like testosterone is probably one of the safest medications a man can take because it is a hormone. Like if you look at the side effects on commercials, which are like, you know, that you may have nausea, gas, diarrhea, like, you know, turn it into a cannibal, like something like that. And then you have the side effects of testosterone, the actual side effects, very mild comparatively. You're not going to experience all that weird stuff. And definitely it's not like side effect death, like that. This is a hormone. This is something you already make in your body. This is not a synthetic pharmaceutical drug that is altering things like very safe. It's actually one of the best things that somebody who has type 2 diabetes can explore because that can absolutely assist because it can help insulin sensitivity. Um, it's a very powerfully powerful neurologically. So it, it's a sympathetic hormone. So it could help drive that um, vitality and like the wanting to win. Because for men, it's it's the winning hormone. It's what gives you the decisive action. It's what gives you that ability to want to conquer and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ali, I want to get to your webinar in a minute, but let's go back to me really quick. Okay. 900 testosterone, but having obviously some, the, the free T and the SH, SHBG are a little high. Um, and I could use uh, to get down to 15%. I'm at like 19% right now. So, I get you get me down there. Cool. Um, and we work on how whatever, like get okay, let's say I'm I'm no alcohol for a couple of months. Uh, do all the things to get those other numbers. So am I somebody who you might say, you know, Aunt, you're not really having you're not uh feeling brain fog or, or lack of motivation, but we don't love these numbers. I don't know if there's am I not someone who you would be like, Aunt, you don't need testosterone. You just, we need to work on these other lifestyle changes to get those other numbers up. Would that be correct? For you personally, yeah, that's the route that I would take. And then we test again after and then see where you're at. 
mm-hmm. see how you feel, all that stuff. Because yeah. again, like if you're supplementing with the right types of vitamins and minerals and all that stuff, and you feel good, like there's no reason to push somebody on TRT if they feel really great. The only reason would be if there's something in their lab work or there's something that they're dealing with that could maybe put them at risk of something greater. Mm-hmm. Or um, like clients I have in their 60s who are not on TRT because they're afraid of a lot of these misconceptions, but they're dealing with constant breakdown when they're on the golf course or these just you know nagging little injuries and muscle issues and stuff. Testosterone can actually help with that because it can help a lot with recovery. And that's when I bring it up to them. I'm like, listen, I'm here for you if you want to discuss it. Like, I don't push guys onto it. I absolutely support 100% what they want to do. We've had dozens of guys who are like, I want to do what I can naturally. And we try that for a year. And then we see where we are a year later. And guys may be status quo. And they're good. Other guys, I still feel like shit. I still am just exhausted. I just can't think clearly. like cool. Maybe we look at TRT and then they've gone on it and, you know, their life is great because of it. But yeah, you know, I, I will always encourage somebody to do what is necessary to improve the quality of their life, but I'm not somebody who's like, well, you should just go on it anyway. Cause you're, you know, 57, like, why not? I mean, mm-hmm. there are outliers that feel great, you know, in their fifties and above. I've seen guys who are 74 who had test levels of 800 and, and his free tea was like, good. And I'm like, how do you feel? Good. Okay. You know, yeah. that's great. Like we have a lot of guys who are on TRT because they feel safe talking to me about it. They feel like they're understood and that this might be something they need. Our youngest client on testosterone. I just did a podcast with him yesterday. Cole, he went on at 25. He did everything we talked about to get those levels up and just nothing budged. And ever since he went on testosterone, his whole entire life improved because he felt he could function optimally. So, you know, there's both ranges of age and stuff. It really doesn't matter what your age is necessarily as compared to what you're dealing with. And have you tried all these things? So. Good stuff. Uh, A side note, uh, interesting, weird thing. I got a friend a couple of years younger who was feeling like crap for the last year and a half. He tried everything, went to doctors, blah, blah, blah. It turns out, believe it or not, he went to the dentist and he had two abscess and he got that taken care of and it totally changed his life. He, it wasn't presenting, I guess the theory was the white blood cells in your body. Mm -hmm. They were, they were overworking to work against those abscess, that abscess. And once he got that taken care of, he's like a new person. It's amazing. I just, I've never heard anybody say that, like feeling tired, go to the dentist, make sure you're okay. Or just why it's important to go to the dentist twice a year, I guess too. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, there's always, there, there could be weird things going on. And honestly, quite often too, like, you know, we were talking earlier about other markers, like thyroid is very powerful in terms of regulating, um, blood sugar and, you know, cognitive enhancement and stuff like that, as is DHEA, which is a precursor to testosterone and estrogen. So if that's low or even pregnenolone, which is like the start of the cascade, if those are deficient, then that can show up as anxiety or insulin resistance. And maybe that can't be fixed through uh, diet and exercise, which I've experienced with clients before, where even guys on testosterone and they're dealing with a higher than ideal uh, A1C, like right in the line of like five, 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 six, and then blood glucose over a hundred. And this person is lean and they have abs and they work out. And yet we realized his DHEA was through the floor, his pregnenolone is deficient. So that contributes to it as well. So it is a very, you know, like an orchestrated symphony. And that's why like you want to get all the markers and not just testosterone. Cause there are guys that'll go off and they'll just test their T levels and their total T levels. And then that's it. Mm -hmm. Or there's guys who think that testosterone might be the fix and maybe it isn't, maybe it's actually thyroid or maybe it's something else. And they're thinking that testosterone is like, you know, the field of dreams that's going to bring them everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ali, you got a webinar coming up 
let's talk about that because that's the closest thing that people can kind of learn more information and kind of get to see slides and, and whatever. So uh, tell us a little bit about that and when it is and, and what you're going to be going over. Yep. February 8th at 8 p.m. Central, which very late for me, um, but I'll be riding high on caffeine. So I'm going to go over uh, more in depth what I talked about today, but also like our approach at Silverback Coaching on how to get people shreddy and sexy as fuck. Um, but also what we do in terms of handling a lot of the social pressures, the navigating, uh, the new identity, what men go through when they're going through these transformations, both physically, mentally, emotionally, what uh, they have to consider with testosterone. And then I'll be talking about a new men's coaching group that I'm launching that will be run by me because I don't do a ton of coaching as much because I have three amazing coaches. So that will be personally run by me. So I'll be discussing that as well. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And we should run roughly an hour or so. And if you guys go on my Instagram at the Ali Gilbert, A-L-I, the link in the bio has the registration page for the webinar. It is completely free. And yes, it will be recorded. So if this does not work with your time zone, then you'll get emailed a recording. Cool. We'll make sure we, we put a link for that in the show notes. So Ali, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, kind of going over some of this stuff. I, I, like I said, it's always confusing for me and there's so much information out there that uh, it's helpful to have a guide and have somebody clear some of this stuff up because it can be uh, super confusing. So I really appreciate you coming on. And I think what I called you, what today's Thursday, I called you Tuesday, late Tuesday night and we chatted a little bit and I, I got you to come on this early. So I bribed you. So Allie, thanks for doing <laughs> this, bud. No, thank you for having me. I always love talking to you. All right, that's going to do for episode 374 of the Strength Coach Podcast. Guys, the show notes are located at strengthcoachpodcast.com. Don't forget, you can try strengthcoach.com out seven days for free. It's worth it just for the forum. Go to strengthcoach.com, get your free trial now. Special thanks to Chris Parrier and the folks over at Perform Better. Don't forget about the Perform Better Rewards Program. Get rewarded for purchases, social activity, referrals, and more. It's easy and free. Just got to have an active performbetter.com account in order to sign up and to view and redeem your rewards. Check it all out at performbetter.com. Thanks to Coach Boyle and Allie Gilbert for sharing their insights and philosophies into the world of strength and conditioning and performance enhancement and TRT. Thanks to Sumi Seth and Nomly helping build relationships through personalized communication so your members stay longer and pay longer. Go to Nomly.com, use the referral code Strength Coach to get started on a free 30-day trial. Thanks to AG1, visit athleticgreens.com slash strength coach and get your free gear supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs today. That's going to do it. I'm Anthony Rana. Thanks for listening, and I'll speak to you next time. <laughs>